Hey Catalyst guys, so we are going to jump straight into the deep end tonight and I want you to imagine the scenario where I give you a piece of paper and on the paper are written the words I am dot 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 and I ask you to finish that sentence about yourself. I am what? How would you describe yourself? How would you define yourself? How do you identify yourself? And that is a big question, right? And it's a big question because really, the heart of that question, what we're really getting at, is who am I? It's a question about identity. And you know what, I've noticed, the question of who am I is a question that comes up loads in like films and TV programmes and books. Like a lot of the main characters that we watch on screen and stuff, they all kind of go through this journey of trying to answer that question. So think about Harry Potter, Ray from Star Wars, um, Jason Bourne, Wonder Woman, Doctor Who, uh, even animated characters like Simba and Bolt, they, a lot of them, they go through this journey of trying to answer the question, who am I? So let's have a look at some of the ways that different groups have answered this question in the past. Uh, when I've done it before, um, here are some of the different answers that, that people have come up with. And you can see that people uh, kind of define themselves or describe themselves. Some go with ethnicity, uh, age or sexuality, different talents, different characteristics, where they fall in the family, um, all kinds of different things. And the reason that I want to talk about it tonight is because I really believe that the way we identify ourselves, the way we think about our identity is really, really important and it is really significant for us. So one film that really shows us clearly that it's really important that we know who we truly are is Captain Marvel. So in a bit, we're going to watch a bit of a clip from Captain Marvel. If you don't know the story at all, let me just explain that Captain Marvel originally just started off as a normal human being called Carol. And Carol ended up absorbing all these superhero powers. But in the process, she was knocked out, she was kidnapped by aliens, and she ended up forgetting everything. So she forgot who she was. She didn't know who she was, she just knew that she had these powers. And so through the whole film, she's trying to get to the truth about who she really is. And the moment of breakthrough comes, the most significant part of the film is when Carol has discovered the truth about who she is. She's learnt that um, the aliens have been lying to her, they've been tricking her. And there's a key moment where she stands up to her enemy and she declares her true identity. She tells them who she really is. She says, my name is Carol. And in that moment, she gets breakthrough, she gets freedom, and Captain Marvel is born in all her, her real power. And so we're going to watch that now. Uh, if you're with us live at Catalyst, we're going to stick it on for you. If you're watching this back, you will need to press pause on this video, open a new YouTube tab. And if you search for Captain Marvel, I'm only human, uh, and watch that clip, that's what we're watching. So now is the time to press pause and let's watch Captain Marvel. I love that clip, uh, there's loads going on and yeah, it just shows us so clearly, doesn't it, that it's really important that we know who we are. And uh, the topic of identity, uh, the world loves to talk about it right now. Um, the world will tell us that we need to express ourselves and uh, we need to listen to our feelings and discover who we really are. And of course it's true, we, we do need to find our true identity. But what I want to tell you tonight which you will not hear the world saying much. I want you to know that the only place we can find our true identity, the only place where we will discover who we really are, is if we listen to God. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God is the only one who can tell us who we really are. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at one Bible verse and we're going to pull out five different things that God is saying about our identity. And the verse is uh, from Ephesians chapter one, verse four. And it says this, it says, even before God made the world, he loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Now that is an incredible verse. 
Um, we're going to pull out five different things. And so let's start with number one. So number one tells us that I am created. The Bible verse said that even before God made the world, God made the world. He carefully put it together. He designed it with great care and great detail. And that includes you. You are not here by accident. You are not here by mistake. No matter what anybody has said, God put you together. He created you uniquely and intentionally, beautifully, wonderfully, purposefully. You are here because God wanted you to be here. You are God's masterpiece. You are created. So let's look at number two. Number two says, I am loved and accepted. And the Bible verse said that even before God made the world, he loved us. And the reality is that God's love for you is too big for us to even get our heads around. And God will never, ever stop loving you. There is nothing you can do to make God love you any less. And there is nothing that can ever separate you from God's love. He will never, ever stop loving you. You can depend on that. You can trust that. That is your identity. I am loved by God. You are fully known and fully loved. So we don't have to live looking for acceptance. We live from a place of acceptance because God has already accepted us. You are loved and you are accepted. So let's look at the next one, number three. Thirdly, I am chosen. Jesus wanted you in his family. He chose you to be in his family. God chose you to be his child. And the place where we see that so clearly demonstrated is on the cross where Jesus chose to be tortured by the Romans, where he chose to die in agony on the cross, knowing that by dying, that he would come back to life, that we would be able to be forgiven so that we could be part of his family. And Jesus chose to go through that because he wanted you in his family. And the crazy thing is that first in Ephesians says that even before God made the world, he chose us. Even before you were born, even before you had breathed your first ever breath, God knew you and he chose you. You have always been chosen. You are chosen. So let's look at the next one, number four. Number four, I am valuable. Like I've already said, it's on the cross where we see how much Jesus wanted us. He was willing to die for us. He was willing to give everything to have us. He was willing to give his very blood. You are worth the blood of Jesus. You are worth Jesus to God. And there is nothing that is more valuable than that. I don't think we can really get our heads around how valuable that makes us. You are valuable. And so let's look at the last one, number five. Number five, I am blameless. So it sounds like a strange thing to say I am blameless because we all know that we all have done wrong things and we all have done bad things and we continue to do bad things. Um, for the rest of our lives, we'll continue to do bad things. But the Bible verse said that God loved us and chose us in Jesus Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So what does it mean to be holy, to be without fault, to be blameless? Well, it means that when we ask Jesus to forgive us, when we asked Jesus to take away our sins and to be king of our lives. That, that is exactly what Jesus did. He took away our sins as far as the east is from the west. And the east and west, they, they can never be together. But he took away our sins and in return, he gave us his perfection. He gave us his purity. That he made us whiter than snow. So that when God sees us, he sees us as completely perfect and pure, blameless, holy and without fault. And that that is how God sees us. That is what God says about us. So, of course, like I, st 
we still do things wrong and we will sin every day, won't we, for the rest of our lives. But that doesn't define us. Our, our behaviour does not define us. Our feelings do not define us. What defines us is what God says about us. And we see in that verse, God has said that we are holy and without fault. You are blameless. And that is who you are. So that's the five points. Um, let's go and wrap it all up. Let's finish off by just reminding ourselves of what those those five points were. Um, so the Bible verse was telling us that I am created, I am loved, I am chosen, I am valuable, I am blameless. And you might want to jot some of those down and like stick them on your bedroom wall or whatever, or you know put them on your phone where you're going to see them. Because you know I reckon the reality is that we will go through moments, we'll go through days or whatever where these things just don't feel like they're particularly true maybe they don't massively feel very true for you right now maybe there's one or two that you know you just don't feel like that maybe you just just I just don't feel very valuable right now perhaps but I just want to say it again and just remind you that you are not defined by your feelings and you are not defined by your behavior you are defined by what God has said God cannot lie these things are true because God has said them. So these things are your truest identity. You are not defined by your behaviour, but you are defined by God's behaviour towards you. And what was God's behaviour? He was willing to die on a cross to save you. His behaviour towards you is love. And so that is your identity. And that is the only place that we will find our truest identity and nothing else. There's no other identity. There's nothing else that compares to what God says about you. And so my prayer, my hope for us is that in the same way that Captain Marvel, Carol, was able to stand up and speak out the truth of who she was, that we will be able to stand up and know deep in our hearts who we truly are. And we would be able to speak these things over our lives, over the lives of our friends, over our identities, and that we would be able to live life to the fullest as God intended, knowing who we really are because we know who he really is. So God bless you guys. And uh, what we're going to do now at Catalyst is we're going to spend some time praying. And if you've watched this back, why don't you take some moment now uh, just to pause uh, to listen to God and to speak to God about all these different things.